so it's in the book. There's a lot of variants on this idea of comp, agda, epigram, all in the various flavors of different type theory. Everything I've said is sort of mostly compatible with, with any of these implementations. It's the sort of general core of the theory. Uh, right? So uh, we use that. George Monsey used this in the proof, in, in his computer verified proof of the four color theorem. The four color theorem, for those maybe who are not familiar with it, it's about, it says, you know, every map can be colored with four, four colors, right? To put it into logical terms, it's a little bit more complicated. The proof required, like, this case analysis of, like, four million cases and in the software, right? And they ran the program, and they're like, look, it returned the truth. So, <laughs> so, so it's good. But some people were unsatisfied with that, right? Because sometimes people make mistakes when writing software. <laughs> and so just because the program returned true, right? What does, does that really mean if it's true? So George Gonsay and Benjamin Warner, they, uh, they implemented the proof in the independent type theory and used this Poincaré principle that we saw where you can use computation. So you just implement the computation in the cop it returns true, but we have this predicate that they do a bunch of logic with to say that if this program returns true, then the four color theorem <laughs> uh, is true, <laughs> right? And you just write that, and then, so that's, so what was the hard part for humans, right, which is doing this like 4,000, 4, 4 million case analysis, right? Right, uh, like, if I were, a math, when I was a mathematician, I would say that's the hard part of the proof, right? But it turns out that's actually the easy part of the proof, right? The hard part is, is showing that that computation has something to do with four coloring maps. Uh, and so you, you write that predicate in, in, uh, in Cox that says that this, this, if this program returns true, then the four color theorem is true. Uh, and then you have to do a bunch of logical reasoning to connect the reasoning that the software is doing when it's calculation to something to do with topology, right? And uh, that is really, really hard. And they reinvented hypermaps and stuff like that and spent a couple of years. Uh, and lo and behold, it worked. Uh, this slide was made before uh, the most recent work by George. She proved the um, he proved the fake Thompson theorem, also known as the odd order theorem which says that every group of odd order is solvable. Deta details of you what the statement mean are not all that important. Uh, but the original proof uh, was, was 300 or 600, something like pages of like graduate level mathematics. <laughs> all right. And, uh, and it, it's a proof that's, that, and it was done in, I think the 30s or 40s, I think. It was the, so let's give a little bit of history. Group theory proofs, right? Up to that point, was like this. You have a proof. It's about five or 10 pages long. You put it into a journal. They publish it. Everyone's happy, right? And then they came, Faden, Faden Thompson came, Faden Thompson came up with this gargantuan proof, right? And you know, mathematics entered a new area because people looked over and they're like, yeah, I'm pretty sure it's right. <laughs> <laughs> and and they, they, they actually redid the proof two or three times and People were quite sure it's correct. They published a two-book volume on, on, on the proof. Uh, but, but it opened the door, because people were like, hey, I can write 300-page proofs. I didn't know this was allowed. <laughs> <laughs> so now, then, uh, this actually led to the classification of finite simple groups, which was based on hundreds of, hundred, probably tens or hundreds of 100-page theorems. Uh, and so this is, this, this is the first very large proof. Uh, in group theory and possibly in mathematics itself, right? And so uh, the, the purpose of this project was to show that that these proof, uh, interactive proof assistants, which are these things over here, particular cock, um, it can uh, handle things of that scale, right? Uh, and it, again, it uses its computation inside of it on a much smaller scale than, than the four color theorem. Uh, so he's in fact the small scale reflection library uh, that's built up to it. I actually worked with George on that project. I did the Galois theory that was necessary for that. So that was a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, this like this this really works. You can really do like math using this theory. It's, it, it's looked like a toy because we're doing n plus n implies m n equals m implies n is equal to n, right? Uh, and it looked a little silly. 
Uh, but this, this, like this can really work. And there's a whole bunch of, this is sort of like the assembly language when I presented to you, right? There's a whole bunch of meta language on top, right? They have a tactic system and all sorts of inference rules to save you from typing every little thing in the world. And it's, a, and it's, a, it's an area that's still ripe for improvement, right? It's programming language design, right? But in essence, it all compiles down to this, right? So our functional programming language becomes the assembly language of proofs. Is how I like to think of it. Uh, that's boring. This is the book that I learned uh, learned kind of type theory from, and it's available free. So you just go there and download it. I think that's that's it. So I can just leave that. Uh,